Okay, we are fixing to get into worship, and I love this time. It's very special, and um, only in the last few years have I even realized what worship was, what true heartfelt worship was, but um, anyone who knows me knows I love Psalms, so I know I usually read something out of Psalms, but why change the pattern? Psalms 95, I'm just going to read a few verses something I read this week, and I just loved it. So I'm going to share it with y'all. Okay, Psalms 95. Oh, come and let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of our praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all other gods. In his hand are the depths of the whole earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow ourselves down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. How powerful is that? Like, he, as he's writing this psalm, he's just saying, like, you know, sing, make a joyful noise to God. And then he goes into, for he is the Lord, our great God. God gave us free will, okay? Not only for to choose salvation, to choose to believe in him, but also we have free will to praise, Like, it's not something that he forces us to do. It's something that is our choice to allow our heart to communicate with God and to praise his name. So this morning, as we go into praise and worship, think and meditate on that psalm and be like, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose to praise this morning because it's a choice that I can make. Because you can do that like Paul did from a prison cell. So as we pray, let's think about that. Dear God, thank you so much for um, allowing us to be here. Thank you for this building. Thank you for the church, which is each and every person sitting in here. Thank you that they made the choice to come today and um, to worship your name. And God, I pray over each person sitting in here and standing out on the porch, God, I pray over each one of them that you would open up their hearts, God, to receive what you have for them today, but also to make that choice to praise your name because you are worthy and you have made us and made this earth and all the things in it, God, and you are powerful and help us to make a joyful noise to you today, God. I pray over the worship team that you would um, anoint them as they help guide us into your presence of worship today and I pray over pastors he brings the message God that you would give him strength and that he would be able to speak exactly what you want him to say in Jesus name amen amen good morning church oh everybody's still asleep good morning church good morning yeah there is joy in the house this morning amen that's why we praise our Lord
team before church this morning that I heard a new song and like Lainey I love songs um, because that's how the Lord speaks to me and um, it's a new song that just came out by um, 10th Avenue North and the title is letting go for dear life and so we've all heard the saying I'm holding on for dear life right like you're holding on for dear life I love love the way that this song is phrased because it talks about having to let go. So I'm just gonna read the chorus to you real quick and then the bridge. It says, I'm letting go for dear life. I lay down the heavy for something light. Now I see who I am in your eyes, nothing to hold but hands high. And with these empty hands, I've got nothing left to prove. And with these empty hands, I can only reach for you. When I lose my life, it's there I find the one who gave his life for mine. The Lord's been, I feel like, moving in this church in a really cool way over the last several months. Um, and he wants to start something, I think, really special. And in order to do that, we have to be willing to serve, right? The problem is, is that God can't give us what he has for us because our hands are closed. We're holding on to so many things. Um, sometimes it's good things that we hold on to, and, and it's, it's, not, it's natural to want to hang on or to, to just cling to something that's good. I, but I believe God's telling us right now, in order for you to move further, to go deeper, to be stronger, you have to let go. And so my prayer for today, my prayer for just this church moving forward is that we can posture ourselves with hands open. So whatever's holding you back this morning, whatever you came in the door with, maybe you weren't even wanting to come to church this morning, but you were like, There's, I, just, I, I just need to go, I just need to go. You're here for a reason. Let go this morning, so that way God can fill your hands.
is trembling, rumbling deep within, where the anticipation of your touch, it cries, come. It burns with desire. The atmosphere yearns. The transformation is preparing, moving, shifting, sounding, trumpeting, calling, come. Transformation, come out of the deep depths evidence be made known be made clear without doubt the shaking of the deep is burning evidence the warring realm the earth moans and booms shifts and moves it cannot contain or withstand the presence within the earth is erupting the pressure's too much to hold. Evidence is being told. Behold, behold, behold. Your presence is being told. Come. The earth cannot withstand the presence of the Lord. And what you are feeling today is the evidence of God's coming. Inside of us, we should be erupting with what he has inside of us like fire shut up in our bones the earth is has got that fire shut up in its bones and the evidence of the earthquakes and the volcanoes and the things that are happening actually deep within the ground because that's where tra transformation takes place deep within the ground and then we get to see and experience, and that is what is going on today.
Here's the word of God says to give them ears to hear and eyes to see. And listen, that reference in scripture is not about being physically blind or physically deaf, some kind of hand. It's talking about your spirit. It's talking about you need to start seeing that. Open your, have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, um, there's spiritual things going on all around, okay? And it's been that way for a long, long time. There's things happening in your home. There's things happening in your country. There's things happening in your government. There's all these things happening, and they have spiritual connotations. You need to be aware of those. Lord, give me eyes to hear. Eyes to hear. That's why they don't give me a mic very often. Lord, give me ears to hear and eyes to see. Okay, now. So I've, we've got a farm out here east of Hutton Valley a little bit. And one of my neighbors out there, it, it's two miles down a gravel road. So, you know, like a cow standing in the gravel road is not the end of the world. Okay? You know, it, the interstate's right not right there you know 63 is not right there and my neighbor's a good guy and sometimes our stuff gets commingled his my cattle are on him or his are on me and we just work it out in time right it's not a you know we're not setting off fire alarms because of it and we have down by the county road down, down by the county road we have this big row we've done it the last three years this big row of silage and it's, it's uh, hey, you, ra- you wrap it in plastic, and it's this bit, it looks like a giant tube sock full of feed. And I will give my neighbor credit. He has some very athletic cows. And a couple winters ago, I don't remember when, but every night, if I was out there in the evening, these three cows would jump the fence, his fence, and they'd walk over there, and they'd eat on the end of the silage. No big deal. And I would forget to tell him. I'd see him in the road, and we'd have these powwows about life and family and politics, you know. And uh, I would forget to tell him. But one day I told him, I said, hey, I've been meaning to tell you, and I forgot. Every night out of that pasture right there, these three cows jump the fence, and they start eating silage. He's like, oh, really? Well, man, I wish you'd have told me. Hey, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. He said, well, how am I going to know which ones they are? And I said, it will be real simple. I said, they're the three fattest ones in that field. (laughs) All right. It was obvious who was eating themselves full every night. Now, listen to me. This doesn't feel super good, but it's the truth. Some of you right now, your spirit's starving. Your spirit's starving because you never feed it one drop of anything. There's a line in the cattle business, and there's lots of them, but this is one of them. You can't starve a profit out of a cow or a calf. You cannot. The healthiest calf is one that's eating. Talk to anybody who raises feeder calves. Talk to the Rothamex. They'll say, standing at the feed bunk is not good enough. I want to make sure they're eating. A calf that's not eating is a sick one. Now listen to me. I don't know how that works for you. I mentioned a few weeks ago, maybe turn off the scary movie. Maybe turn off the secular music and turn on the Christian music. Maybe blow the dust off your Bible. I don't know. Maybe do something to feed your spirit and then watch it grow. How can you expect it to be big and strong and healthy when you're literally starving it to death? Then you'll have spiritual eyes to see, oh, it's easy. It's those three. Why? Because they're getting fed. Some of you, listen to me, this is the last thing. Some of you show up to an event like this and get nothing out of it. Because you don't have ears to hear and eyes to see. Listen, you were born for such a time as this. God didn't make a mistake. Every promise in God's word is available to you today. even, Even over and above the circumstances of the day. Why can we believe for the half-hearted, but we can't believe for the full-hearted? The old atheist thing, I don't have enough faith to believe that on a humid day all this came to be. I don't have enough faith for that. There's 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 an ultimate God who knows you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. says he's cradled every tear you've cried, and he's working on your behalf today. When you go, go to bed tonight, he'll be working on your behalf today. And how does he do that? Through the Spirit of God. 
This is what the word says about you. Everybody say same spirit. Same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. Start feeding it. Start feeding it. And then this, watch it grow. Watch it grow. Watch it grow. Everybody say, watch it. <laughs> Easy. Grow. Father God, we thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, even though we might starve our spirit from time to time, maybe for years, you don't quit on us. That some of us don't even know that you're almost spiritually sick because you can't even eat. Lord, I pray for heavenly antibiotics, Lord, like you give a calf, Lord, that'll, that'll make all that go away, Father God, where you can get to the bunk and get your portion because God has your portion available to you. He can bless you like no one else can because he created you and he knows you. It's so hard to buy a gift for somebody you don't know. But somebody you know, it, it, it's, it shouldn't be that difficult. Lord, open our spiritual eyes. Open our spiritual ears. Lord, help us to start feeding the things that are important. Father God, because there's a lot of fear in the world right now. But we believers, we don't live by fear. We live by faith. And sometimes you can't see to have faith. That's why you have it. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. We thank you, God, that above all, you're still in control. Ushers, you come, Lord. I pray you'll bless this offering. You'll multiply it. And you'll bless people in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. You can be seated. Bob's class dismissed. Middle school dismissed. No, yeah, if you if you want to, you can. Sure, go ahead. Hey, re uh, praise report real quick. Got a praise report real quick. I, f I forgot to. Uh... They got your mic shut off. Hey, Lee, can you get power back on the Scott's mic real quick, please? Thank you. Um, maybe now. Okay. Hey, I for was supposed to do this earlier and I forgot. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Debbie Pitts was in a car wreck on Wednesday afternoon. Debbie is. Uh, Casey Pitts' uh, mother and Misty Pitts' mother-in-law come over here, sit over here usually. They're small and blonde. Right back Where there are in you? the very oh, back. Very in I the think back. they're here, right okay. There, yeah. um, in a Toyota 4Runner, got T-boned by a dump truck full of gravel. Um, and air, was air flighted to Mercy in Springfield um, with some broken bones beat up. But here's the deal. Um, she's alive. Mm-hmm. That's a praise report. Yes. Usually think things like that end with a family night, right? Um, this is this is the update this morning I got from Casey. He says, Mom is doing much better. We were just singing about the Spirit of God, and it's everywhere all the time. Right here it says, Mom is doing much better. She's breathing well on her own. Yes. Had a tube in yesterday. The yes. tube is out, and uh, she, she will not have to have surgery on her ribs. Hallelujah. Yeah. She had a successful surgery on her arm and elbow and has handled that well. Her neck is broken. But, okay? But. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, But Lord. it's a break that will heal on its own. Thank you, Lord. Never heard of anything like that in my Amen. Life. Amen. Uh, she's communicating well and getting ready to start trying some food. We think she may be out of ICU in the next 24 hours. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good praise report. Continue to pray for Debbie, for Scott as well, and the rest of the family. Uh, that family is acquainted with miracles. Uh, am I right, Misty? Huh? We've been there before, ain't we, hon? And so... Uh, how I many all know he's the same God, right? He's a miracle working God. And so we, there is, I love that line that I told him in the early service. First time I'd ever heard that last song that I love that line about there's more power in the hem of his garment than there is in the whole enemy camp, man. I like that line. So thank you, Brandon Lake and Holy Spirit for writing that line for us. Amen. Don't you forget that in the battle. Um, so in early service, and we usually don't do a, a, a double take on this, but uh, these young people are here on both services nearly all Sundays. Um, CJ and Carly, if you guys want to come up and bring a little Addison up. Uh, and so we've we, 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 uh, we done our regular arrow routine with the baby dedication and uh, dedicated little Addison Elaine. She's back asleep again. She was awake just a little bit earlier. So... I love the way she just goes at it. Man, I want to sleep in church sometimes myself. So anyway, anyway, uh, so I shared with early service that, um, so Psalm 127 is a, is a psalm that we always do with our baby dedications here. Um, years and years ago, I was sitting in a tree stand. Um, everybody say prayer. That's what I named my tree stand. And so if I was ever in prayer, somebody would call or text or whatever. I'd say, I can't come right now. I'm in prayer. And so I also named my boat Visitation, just so you know. So if I ever tell you I'm out on Visitation, it's coin toss, right? So I'm just teasing. Come on, all. Hey, I don't want to lie to anyone. So, you know, all right. So here's the story. This is true. I have to sometimes qualify that kind of stuff. I always carried a little New Testament with me in my hunting pack. I love to bow hunt. And so uh, and this is years and years ago when I was sitting up in um, my tree stand and I was reading out of that little New Testament and I was reading in the Psalms and the Spirit just started downloading Psalm 127. And so as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man is what it says, right? Lest the Lord builds the house. This out starts in verse 1. Lest the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. That's Psalm 127, 1. And it goes on through the watchman wakes, but it's in vain. The Lord don't keep the city, right? Then he goes on, verse 3, says, Children are the heritage of the Lord. And so this is God's heritage. This is little Addison. And so we want second service to get to celebrate with him because uh, obviously CJ is on the keys this morning. Um, 
very talented. Carly plays violin for us a lot. And, and, and so um, I want both services just to recognize as we have dedicated her to the Lord, as arrows are in the hands of the mighty man, and this is what the Lord began to download, that arrow is designed. You, you, you don't go to the archery shop back in the day when Psalm 127 was written. You don't go to the archery shop back then. There was a creator that built that arrow, right? From a branch or from a piece of wood, and he fashions that. And the fingerprints of that creator are all over that arrow right there. How many of y'all would agree with that? Amen. Made in his image. And the fingerprints of Almighty God all over. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man. So we're talking about God, the mighty man. But there has to be a launching mechanism. And by God's plan, the launching mechanism is a husband and a wife. It's a family. It's a mom and a dad. And it's like the bow. There is power that is transferred from the arms of the mighty man. When the hand of this hand, I'm a right-handed shooter, when this hand is firmly in the middle of a marriage, and the limb here and the limb here representing the father and the mother, and the transfer of the power from Almighty God to this one point. That arrow is designed to fly by design, but it doesn't have the power to fly on its own. How many of y'all know, right? It has to have something to empower it. It's designed to catch the wind and to ride that wind and to hit the mark. Everybody say, hit the mark. And so it's vitally important, not just for the immediate family, but for the church family to play our role, to do our part in the upbringing of our children. I mean, I believe that, especially in our culture today. And so I don't know what your role is. I don't know what all your parts are. Um, but here's what we want to do. We want to be little Addison's encourager. We want to be Addison's teacher. We want to be Addison's friend. We want whatever role God has for you to play in Addison's growth and in her maturity. Birthdays will come and time will pass and she will grow. And at the end of the day, here's you another archery term. It's sin, which literally means to miss the mark. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short. But if we, as a church family, can come around, and not just this little baby girl, but all the other little babies that are in this congregation, and we can do our part, then that power that is stored in the arms of Almighty God, there will come a time when this little girl is no longer a little girl, but she'll be grown, and there comes a time that you have to release that arrow. And everything that it's designed to do, if we have it aimed properly, if all of those things come, how many of y'all know, we don't miss the mark. We hit the mark. The Apostle Paul said, I press toward the mark. Everybody say the mark. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you agree with me as we, one more time, we're going to lift little Addison before the Lord. Church family, we had the whole crew up here. Golly, it looked like half the early service came up here whenever, when you get the Barry crowd and the good crowd together, there's a pile of them. Uh, Curtis, his dad, was bragging. He said, this is the ninth one. Blow hard anyway. I tell you what. He's a happy grandpa. He's got his quiver full. And I get it. I'm just jealous. So it's, you know. All right. I want you to stand with me. And here's what let's do. And I want you to pray. We're praying. We're going to hold this little girl who is a gift from God. She is the reward. Right? She's a reward from Almighty God. And we're going to hold her before the Lord. And we're going to, we're going to pray for her as her church family. We're going to dedicate her to the Lord and we're going to declare blessing over her. Are you in that one with me? Everybody there, put your hand up this way and let's pray over baby Addison. Father God, thank you for CJ and for Carly. And we thank you, Lord God, for this baby girl. We thank you for Addison Elaine Good. Thank you, Father, for the blessing that she is. Your fingerprints, your handiwork, it's all over her, Lord God. She's made in your image. And right now, we don't know all the talents, the callings, the direction, the purposes that you've planned for her life. But we know the plans that you have for her. They're good plans. They're plans, Lord God, for a wonderful future. And so we speak that and we declare that over her. We pray, Lord God, that as she grows, Father, that we would be 
influencers in her life, that we would be examples to her, that we would model her in all the different capacities and the callings that are represented in this congregation. We thank you, Lord God, as we speak blessing over her, that she is blessed as she grows up, as she learns, and as she matures, Lord God. She is blessed in the house, and she is blessed when she goes out. She is best, blessed at work and blessed, uh, Lord God, at rest, at play, Lord God. She is blessed in all that she puts her hands to, Father God. May your safety and protection keep her and watch over her. May your Holy Spirit fill her, Lord God. May she be filled with the knowledge of your word and understanding, Lord God, and wisdom. We pray, Father God, for wisdom for CJ and for Carly as well and for the rest of us, Lord God, that we would be sensitive to your spirit to know, Lord God, what to speak, when to speak, and how to speak into her life, Lord God, that we would be able to assist, Lord God, in what you're doing in her life and come alongside her, Father God. We thank you for her. So we hold her before you in this congregation today, Lord God, and we dedicate her back to you and we vow to you, Lord God, that we will do our best to raise her in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Maybe a little golf clap as you know one of those little lights.